15th anniversary as a radio station. Don't forget that CTFM is the sister station of City TV. So tonight I'm going to try and retell the story of a radio station that started quite um, innocuously and has become the main listening portal for many Ghanaians. So stay tuned. Hashtag Point of View. We're also live on Facebook at CTTVGH. When we come back, I'll give you my plan of action. So we'll be mixing uh, the story into it. I'll be playing for you some reports on various aspects of what we've done over the past 14 years. And I'll interview two interesting people. I'll say two men who initiated me into commercial broadcasting. So Samuel Atamensa is my, my boss. is the MD of CTFM and Paul Adomatri, my first head of current affairs. They'll be joining me later on to help tell the story. But we have a series of reports and interviews we've put together. The first one was put together by Umaru. Sanda Amadou, who just left CNR with Vivian. Special report on the city at 14. This is just part of the story. Enjoy. It was the start of the new millennium. Media pluralism was the order of the day. And that was when 97.3 CTFM was born in Adabraka, an area that is unfamiliar with the phenomenon. CTFM's challenge was not only that it was new, but also that I was going to be broadcasting solely in English language. This meant it was going to compete in a market dominated by giants, including Joy FM, which had operated for close to a decade. Kafui Kuon was here when it all started, and she says it wasn't all rosy. I wouldn't say it's been easy. 14 years ago, when we came into the scene, there were more than 20 radio stations. It's not been easy. Radio sales was difficult. Nobody wanted to um, do any business without them because somehow they were tagging us as an MPP station. Some people told us outright that they won't advertise with us, but somehow God has brought us this for 14 years. And I think yeah, we are doing well. Bernard was even judged the um, best journalist of the year, and then the City Breakfast Show too. 14 years. The God has been good to us. Like every business, there were ambitious plans that were not understood by many from outside. And the critics were at every step of the way. But General Manager Bernard Avler says these are anticipated, but surmounting them is what makes one stand out. If anybody would have thought that on our 14th anniversary, they will come with the awards we got last week, I would have said they were lying. But I, I think God planned it his own way so that to let people know that he has endorsed what we are doing. Our work as a radio station in the media house is to bring light to the situations in the country, for people to see the reality on the ground so that our country can move forward. And we pray for wisdom to keep doing that. We have a strong leadership team headed by Samens, who we are proud of. This building has been put up not just by those of us who are here, but by a lot of those who passed through contributing their quota. So we really want to thank our listeners and our former staff as well. And for those who are here now, and we pray for wisdom for the next 14 to be greater than the first 14, so that city will become not just a household name in Ghana, but also in Africa and hopefully the world. But in the mix of ups and downs, one man stood in the thick of affairs to ensure growth and progress. He is Samuel Atamensa, the managing director and father of the radio station that has remained relevant always. I knew that in five years there were certain things I was going to do. I was going to go straight for the younger market. Mm. And the younger market is people who have just finished SHS. Mm -hmm. And that was the target. And that's the reason I went straight for university, um, those who had just exited university, mm. to be the frontliners. Mm. And I had passions from different people, including my very close friends. Oh, yeah, we thought you were going to do something magical. You go and take these small, small boys and girls. <laughs> Bernard and Jessica. Well, you know, at that time, nobody knew who Bernard was. Yeah. So, but I, I, I was okay with that because the thing is, I hadn't gone to take a loan from any bank. And I wasn't going to poach anybody. And my life in radio, I've never poached anybody before. And I won't poach anybody. Because, you see, two things about poaching. For me, there's a morality question about poaching. Why should somebody be the one to build up a talent for you to go and steal? That's my first thing, because I, I don't think that's how it should work. But again, I can't dictate um, how the industry should run. Mm. And then secondly, 
I think that there are cultural conflicts when you have a habit of poaching okay. people okay. because every organization is built on culture mm -hmm. and culture it's the character of the organization yeah. and so at times mixing characters from different organizations can give you a bigger problem mm -hmm. and so that's why poaching is not part of uh, my strategy. Happy birthday to us. We are 14 years old. What does 14 mean in the life of a radio station? Are we teenagers? Are we adolescents? Or are we now part of the older folk? We don't know. We have two men who were part of the original story. They got me from Legon campus as a 23-year-old and put me on the radio. So I've invited them to come and tell us where CTFM has come from. During the interview, we'll play other reports for you. So I have Samuel Atamensa, who's the MD of CTFM, CTTV. He's wearing the same shirt he wore in the morning. Samens. Good to have you on the show. Thank you. I came to work. <laughs> it's great to have you on the show. This is the Thank first you time you're point of view. First time. Like, today, actually, is the first time on CCTV. Oh, really? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, so, oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. So. Wow. Then my ratings will go up today. <laughs> <laughs> it has to. I also have Paul Adumache. So when we started, Paul was the head of current affairs. Paul, it's great to have you. Thank you, Bernard. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you for your, your report. On, on me. Yeah, I don't know yeah. where you got my brother from. Yeah, he's, he's my buddy, you know, so I, I reached out to him. <laughs> so you did in Canada, yeah. Skype with him? Yeah, I did a Skype with him, you know. And, uh, but your show is interesting. The, these nice days, you, you add a lot of things. You add a lot of videos and people singing and things. I consult some men regularly on how to stay afloat <laughs> with the competition. But it's a very beautiful time. I mean, it's an emotional time. It's also a beautiful time. When I saw the posters on Sunday night, yeah. I was shocked. I said, oh, 14. So I remember 10. Mm. And then I looked through and it's really represented mm. what we stood for. There, there are a lot of things I'll say tonight uh, that, that will help people to understand the things that they hear on the radio and the things that they are seeing on the TV now. So for, today is 5th November. <coughs> so officially it's our 14th anniversary. But CTFM, as an idea, didn't start on 5th November. When did the ideas give, give us some backstory as to how the whole thing started, how Samens came to what? How did the whole you thing know, start? I, I'd always been um, confused about that, but I realized that there was an idea that Samens thought we should do a lot of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. So I think we started around July, July when yes. you finished your exams. Yes. Sometime in June. Yes. Then everyone came and we started and we were doing, we we're running the show like we are a regular radio station for that period you know, mm -hmm. June, July, August. Mm -hmm. And then I can't remember sometime in November we started. This was an election year, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then in December, the elections occurred. But basically what happened, I had a relationship with Uncle Nick. I, I still That's can't Nick remember. Amatifi. Yeah. Well, I knew him before the, the, um, 2000, the 2000 election. election. Yeah. Oh. Yes, okay. but I built a relationship with him sometime after. And I realized later that he was looking at getting into media. Originally, he was looking at television. So he mentioned that to me. Uh, he used to work then with Yao Parasama, our first marketing manager. Programs manager. Yeah, programs programs, yeah, programs. Yeah, programs yeah. Yeah. So marketing was uh, Chris. Chris Adama. Chris Adama, yes. So um, he used to work with Yao. So then he told me the idea about television and we're talking about it. Then one day he said, well, the television didn't work out, but radio works out. And I said, okay, that's actually better because I know somebody who can actually do the radio. Then he said, no, no, no. I want young people, I want you and Yao to do it. I said, yeah, he's also young. The one I know too is young. Uh, he's outside the country and I can bring him to, to work on it. And he said, are you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. He said, okay, what's going to be the philosophy? And I said, I don't know. You let me bring this guy. <laughs> then he comes and he said, you have a lot of confidence in this guy. I said, yeah, absolutely. So I called some men. He was in some African country. He came. He was in Cameroon? Sure. Somewhere. No, I was in Freetown. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's really he came. He wasn't too sure. He said a lot of people do that. They want to start radio and they don't understand. I said, no, this guy's a serious guy. And that you already know him. His Uncle Nick. You know, I mentioned other people that it made him remember who this Nick Amatefi was. So we went to him and I remember Nick's, ex Nick's words exactly till now. He said to Samens that I want to do radio. Mm. And I spoke to Paul. <laughs> and he said that he can take me somewhere, but you can take me further. <laughs> And we all laughed. So that's how the rest I don't remember. That's how the relationship started. Then we started wow. looking for office space. We, first, we started looking at the name okay. of the radio station. I don't remember what names we came up with, but we had voice. Yes, we had voice. Oh, yes, so yes. we have voice FM. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Voice. Yes. Um, then some googled something, and you know, we, we went. Then 
I didn't participate in that because for yeah, me, it was, um, my burden had been taken away. My man Kuma. No, no, Kuma, yes, my yes, yes. Kuma, yes. the musician. The guy who helps us run our events. Yeah. Yes. He brought the city name. City, yeah. And then, the, yeah. then, then you brought the spelling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Yes, at that time, Chris Adama and I got excited because, was it Honda? That had released a city car or Honda so City, city. That's yeah, yeah, yes yeah, yeah. so we thought that oh that sort of face he says no we don't going to spell it like that we're going to spell it differently c-i-t-i -I. -I. then someone's brought up the colors and that the, the old logo the the headphones the logo, yeah. with the headphone yeah. 10 yes 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 that that logo he designed it then the next thing was to look for a place of office so i think we went around a few places we yeah. almost zeroed in on one particular one yeah somewhere is, um, on, on this road yeah on the kojo thompson road um mm. the old nestle office yes something yeah, like that yeah so it's I on the road side to be fair to you bernard and to be to be to be honest i wasn't once a mess came in i went to why bed. were you so sure that once once a mess we came in, i went to bed that, what was it because i had seen what some had some done. history about that i seen what some had history. done he had worked with him he had worked with so many news reporters so once some came in i went to bed but at that time i was still in law school i was doing tv so i, I really didn't a lot of things i as i'm telling i didn't bother once some is dealing with it i'm fine so you just get, so i understand the idea with the right it. person i wanted to deal with the news because that was where the key competition was going to be. Mm -hmm. I knew that he was going to be an important support with the news and he mm -hmm. was going to manage the entertainment and the programs by himself. But I wanted to be an important resource for the news and let people understand what news was about. And he told me that if we we're going to win, we we're going to win on news. Mm -hmm. So everything else is not important. Let's try and get the news and win on it. So when we brought everyone about, about into the newsroom, a few things I'll say, but then the, to finalize the story of how we came here, mm -hmm. one afternoon he called me and said, we found a place, his Uncle Nick's house, and that is in that Abraka somewhere, so I came to see it. When we came to look at it, it wasn't very attractive, you know, it was funny. Then he said that we, we are going to, this is where we are going to be, there's no other choice. This is the easiest, it's a straightforward one, and uh, the engineer, uh, Mr. Parasama, was going to deal with it, and when he finished, it would look nicer. So. As the engineer was coming, I was looking much nicer. It was looking probably like the best, most beautiful radio station. Then the most, important thing, or something. the most important thing he said, we need to do a prayer consecration. Mm. I don't know whether you were part of that. Most likely we didn't tell you. No. Yes, yeah, so we did the prayer. How many days, Samens, was it? <laughs> Me, Samens, Opaya, Samoa, Prophet Peter. We did a prayer consecration. I think it was about a week. Wow. And then in the process, the Spirit of the Lord gave us direction on the ground <laughs> and what to do. So by the time you guys came and noticed the changes on the ground, we had gone through a spiritual process. Yes. Okay, just hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Before we, we continue the story, mm -hmm. how formidable was the market leader at the time? I want you to explain. I mean, the, the, the English broadcast market leader was obviously Joy. Yes. And it, it, it was unthinkable to imagine that you will be able to overtake joy the way Samen said. Because I my my first thinking was okay, so who are we going to get from joy? He said, No, 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 stop that. Oh. That that we're not going to get anybody. We are going to get people like the way you came to joy and we'll have to deal with it. Raw. Yes, we cannot go to Uncle Nick and say they're going to charge you a lot of money and they'll say you are poaching, poaching. and let's stop that. Unless somebody genuinely wants to work with us, mm, and, then and he comes. comes, okay. But let's not have a plan to go pick anybody from anywhere. You are here, I'm here. We should be able to deal with this thing. Wow. Okay. So we went into Legon, and uh, we brought all the people. Then, in his mind, he decided a quota to come from the investor, a quota to come from GIJ, and we put it together. Then we started wow. a newsroom. Then, what I think we brought to the newsroom was clearly the intellectual capital that was very very important mm. and we used to have a lot of arguments in the newsroom and one day we had this our regular argument i'll backdate it and say something else but one day we used to have this regular argument and then he was in his office and he heard that he called me and he said what you are hearing from the newsroom is it not better than the joy 1999 2000 team because I thought that was the best team ever in Ghanaian English radio. 1999-2000 team at Joy. When we finished the election, BBC wanted everyone. Wow. Yes, yes. So, so he was telling me, listen to the people. And listen to the quality. I heard them talking to you about the story. Why is it a good story? Why is it a bad story? And, and then we brought lawyers in, Isankuma and others, to come and train our people. That's all before we started. To come and train our reporters. You know, Incidentally, because I was in law school and I was very excited about law at the time, Six of our people, all, you know, you're the only one who was hard of hearing. <laughs> I, I, I rebelled. And you stayed with your economics. But everyone went to study law. Yes. I went to Gimpa. 
So when I was doing a, a film on the election petition, and I went to see Terry and Clement, and I saw the list of lecturers, and I kept looking at some pictures, and they were laughing at me, saying, yeah, you know him. I said, yeah, he was a city. And about a quarter of the lecturers, you know, the uh, Kelly, Kwesi Delata. He's also the NDC guy. Yes. Yeah, he was an NDC guy. Now, I'd like to say he was an NDC guy on a certain point, and the philosophy that we brought to the newsroom. The idea we brought to the newsroom is that for you to be a news reporter in politics and current affairs, you have to have a political philosophy. In the city newsroom, we were not worried about whether somebody's NDC or somebody's MPP. The important thing was the impartiality of the person, the way he reported. For you, we pigeonholed you in the situation that Bernard is neither here nor there, but you were also very worried about what I always excused as politics, when politicians were not skipping their word, they were not doing what they said they, they, said they would do, and you come and ask me, I say, oh, it's politics, and you got very upset with that, that what is politics? This is making an excuse for politicians. So what we did in the city newsroom was that we uh. tested the impartiality of our people. So if you were NDC, we knew you were NDC, and an NDC story came that was not palatable to the NDC, wanted you to do it. Wow. So sometimes we usually get phone calls from politicians attacking individuals in the newsroom, and he would tell them that he's a member of your party. <laughs> and they would be surprised. But that was because the philosophy in the newsroom wow. was that we don't mind whether you like NDC or you like MPP, you are left wow. wing or you are right wing. We are here to do an impartial job. And you have to be knowledgeable, you have mm. to understand the story, and you have to deal with it impartially. And I'm sure still he still gets calls and he tell them that, but the guy is a member of your party. Well, I will let you pause because at the time I was too young to know what was going on. No, no, we, you know, we pretty hold you. We said that that's for Bernard. You know, he comes and says that. Politicians are liars. Yeah, they are liars. <laughs> ben, ben. You, you come and say, ah, are you then this said said, Paul, this is a story. I said, oh, it's politics. So what is politics? <laughs> you know, the guy is lying. You are defending him and he says it's politics. Wow. So, so wow. you know, and I think that you've kept the same standard. Mm. I mean, uh, you've been very hard on the vice president recently, you yeah. know. Uh, but I think it is part of your, your your standards and the way you do things. And the fact that you think that politicians must be held to account. Of course. Yes. So so that's how the newsroom worked. It worked really on the strength of your intellect. We got them to read and to read and to read. And Samens was very supportive of people who wanted to go back to school. That you won't find in many places. You know, of across board, everyone, everyone who went to school and wanted to come back. Clement Akapan was doing the six o'clock news when he was back, you know. So we started the news and we thought the news was working but we also felt that people were not hearing us mm -hmm. because the competition was significant so Very. we wanted people to hear us and we we're confident that when they heard us they will know that we are better so the idea came about evening news to come to 5 30. i was confident about that because i was i remember i was in the joint newsroom when some men shifted the news from one o'clock to twelve o'clock because mm. GBC at the time was a news leader. They were reading, they had been reading their one o'clock news from the time Kwame Nkrumah was president. <laughs> they hadn't changed. It had become a wow. standard, a time for people to expect the news at 1 mm. p.m. He came and said, we'll go 12 p.m. Everybody said no. Those of us who didn't have anything to say, we said, well, we'll do it and see. And it worked. Mm. So when he came back and said, look, let's bring the news to 5.30. I was confident about it. But there was something else that was quite innovative that, um, that I'm sure you probably know, you hear it now. When we started at 5.30, we still felt that our stories were being taken and used at 6 o'clock by the, the by competitors. Competition. So he told me that, announce the story and say that we'll treat it at 6 o'clock. So if it's today and I come and I say that, um, what, um, Hanabisu has won the, the NDC thing and that I have an interview with Hanabisu, but it will come at 6 and this is 5.31. So people then had to... Decision. So you took the competition on front end because we thought that when it comes to analyzing the news, we were better. We were sure that we were better, mm. and we we're sure that if people heard us, they will know that. You know, I mean, I can't imagine the depth of gratitude we had and the excitement when Joy FM moved their news to five thirty. <laughs> I mean, that is the biggest <laughs> thing that has happened in radio in Ghana. Invitation is the best yes. form of flattery. I mean, it's the biggest thing that has happened in radio in Ghana. That for the pride of multimedia, they were able to succumb to this pressure. That look, if you come at six o'clock, you are late. The guys at Adabraka have finished with the story, wow. you know, and, and, and they have kept it as 5 30 since, mm. you know, and, and we also go eyewitness at 5 30. So th I think that was the biggest manifestation that there was something right that we had done. Okay. And if we continue to do this as far as the news is concerned, I mean, City was here. Samus, to why did you agree? Because you had done radio, done the 2000 elections, gone back to school, was working at a multinational, traveling across the continent. What did you see that made you agree to do this? Is, is it the same way Paul described it? What can you, how do you qualify that? 
that part? Well, you know, I, I, I'm not so sure if I'll be able to remember exactly, uh, you know, what prompted me to agree. Um, because, I mean, I've been in, in contact with Paul, like, forever. So, uh, even regardless of which country I find myself in, he's one person that I'll be speaking with mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And so he, he gives me information what's going on in Ghana and, and what's going on in, in the industry and all that. But prior to Uncle Nick calling us into this, um, our brother Komla had brought up a similar one. Uh, you know. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Komla had called me about um, somebody who was trying to, I think the frequency was at the time 95.1. Uh, it, it turned out to be Herbert Manson's um, mm -hmm. uh, station later on. <clears throat> but I wasn't too sure about that. But the significant thing maybe I can say uh, today is I remember I'd come to Ghana and after church one Sunday, the Archbishop just called me into his office and then he said to me that, you know something, stop selling the sugar water and go back to the media. Wow. Uh -huh. Stop selling the sugar water <laughs> and come back to media. And go back to the media. That's where you belong. And that's straight mm. without a prior Discussion. conversation. You didn't even know you, you were know. contemplating anything. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, you know. So at the time, maybe one thing I Paul skipped, myself and Paul started a newspaper called. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't want you to laugh at us. <laughs> we had a newspaper. <laughs> it's, it's not registered. The Ghanaian Telegraph. <laughs> Yeah, Fred Diogo was the editor. <laughs> I was a reporter for the paper. What year would that be? 2002? Um, 2002, 2003. The publishing, 2002. Yeah, publishing, it was 2000. The publishing base was Samens' house yeah. at Spintex Road. And the paper was called what? The Ghanaian, Ghanaian Observer. Telegraph. Ghanaian Telegraph. 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 Yeah, who, Telegraph. Are your, who are your journalists? Um, me, me. No, and, 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 and Larry Dogwe. Yeah, Larry Dogwe was with us. <laughs> Larry Dogwe, who now is at uh, the, 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 the Herald. Yeah. The Herald, yes. Larry, Larry, Larry Dugway. Alan Dogwe. Yeah, he was with us, yeah. And then there was... Um, wow. If we was there, if we was there was there. another lady. Oh, there was a lady. Yeah. yeah, there was a lady who also worked with us briefly, yeah. who's now the PRO for Ghana Police. Um, um, a I am... A, a, a backman. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Sheila. Sheila. Uh, no, not Sheila. What's the name? Yeah, Sheila. Yes, yeah, Sheila Backman. That, yeah. was, that was an, an enterprise yeah, that we, we didn't have the capacity to sustain. <laughs> newspaper was very hard. You and the people who held the newspaper thought it was good. <laughs> the Ghanaian <laughs> Telegraph. They were they helped it, a bit, know, yes. Yeah, they, read it, they, were, they were backman also. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, they were, they were, we used to call her coach. Mm. At the time, they were students at uh, GIJ. Um, wow. You know. So you started paper, it failed? Yes. But you were convinced that this was a good thing to do. This CTV. Yes, I mean the, the, the thing about the paper is that we all we all had divided attention. Okay. So, uh, much, Paul yeah. was in school. I was traveling in and out of the country. I'll be here and the next time in Cameroon. The next time, you know, so it, it really wouldn't work. Uh, but when we came into radio, we we kind of had a blueprint mm. of what it took to run radio. And then we also had a desired future state of what we wanted the radio to look like. Um, and so we could say that in, in one year, this is what we want it to be like. We knew that in two, three years, some people will leave and others will come. We, we had calculated all that. And reason is that we only got people who were very ambitious. And ambitious people, they normally will not stay at one place. And so um, we planned mm. it in that way. Um, and the, another good thing is that we, we were fortunate to have Uncle Nick, you know, because not everybody will put up the platform like that and allow you to to have a free ride. So he didn't interfere Never. with the strategy? No, no, no. Never, ever. Wow. And it's been 14 years since we started working. Uncle Nick has never, ever gotten angry at anything. You are serious? Never gotten angry at anything anything and wow. so this is the space and the freedom that we were given and that's actually motivated us to push it to where uh, we find ourselves wow. today this is the point of view we are retelling the city story with Paul Adomachi, our first head of current affairs Samalata Mensa, our first and still managing director if you love city send us a comment let's hear from you what do you wish for us for the next 14 which aspects of the story intrigue you the most we'll come back and tell you more about the major faces and the turning points. So they've just given us the initial story, but I'm sure there were some interesting inflection points. And I'm going to push them to tell us that. Don't go away.
Receiving money from abroad with MoneyGram is now as easy as a bank alert. Now you can receive money from your loved ones abroad in minutes, anytime, 24-7, directly into your bank account. Let's show you how. Tell your loved ones to send you money online or from a MoneyGram location and give them your bank account details. Your money is then transferred in minutes and you can receive your money straight into your account. Your money is available to you anytime, rain or shine, in just minutes. Available in select banks in Ghana. For more information, visit www.moneygram.com.gh. MoneyGram, bringing you closer. City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi-TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back. We are trying to reminisce the good old days and also trying to project into the future. This is City at 14, special edition of The Point of View. My guest, Paul Adomotri, who was our first head of current affairs, host of our flagship eyewitness news, and some other men, the architect who put the whole thing together. And they are retelling the story. A few of your comments coming in quickly. So, uh, Kwame from Islam says, Good evening, Bernard. Congrats for your award. Samens was my friend way back when he was at Joy. <laughs> Where is Shamima? City FM no size. You are more than great. Kwame is on. Kuku Dan Soman says, Good evening, Bernard. Congrats to City FM and all the good work you guys have done. You've proven that young guys should be given a chance and they'll perform. Samens, congrats. And all those who work with you. Paul, I used to like your program. Good evening, Ghana. And in fact, it was my best program. But this, this is like you are a philosopher, a chorister, etc. <laughs> Please get back to your good days of serious economic analysis. We still like you. Ha ha ha. Thank you. <laughs> This is Queen Dan Soman. <laughs> you know, he brought some women singing the last time. <laughs> no, they're a choir, University of Ghana. What? Uh, small so, children. Poor. No <laughs> women. <laughs> how do you? Small children. How do you determine that it's time to change the flavor of what? You see, you've been, you. I, when I was in Presak, I was listening to you on oh, radio. Man. You've been on TV for over twenty years, and people still watch you. It means that you are doing something right. No, no. You see, I have to come fall back at Samens. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. Now I explain to I you why. Yes, question. I know, I know. You see, I learned a lot from Samens in media and Komla too. Okay. Uh, people have favorite radio stations uh -huh. and favorite TV programs. Then you, you have what you call uh, living standard measure, which Samens explained to me. And I learned also a lot from Talal Fatal, who said that television is a show. So make it a show. You can do the hardcore stuff, but when... People have other things to do. You have to give them a little bit to laugh at, a little bit to cry about, a little bit to be serious about, all in one, one if you can. It becomes very expensive to do. Yeah. So you have to generate ideas of the street. Mm -hmm. And the ideas of the street is where I come to some where you are standing with him on the street. Something happens and he says, this is a program. Mm. This right there is content. This is, we didn't used to use the word content then, mm -hmm. but this right there is a program that you can deal with. So I just look at stuff and, and I think that, well, this is... Because Sunday, I saw some uh, people singing some songs. Yeah, Ghana, my happy home. Because I was trying to whip up sentiments, you know, a, a, um, a patriotic streak in people. And you have to make them laugh as well. So when you start watching the video and you see me, whether you like me or not, you will laugh at it. But what is he doing? What, what about it? the prophets? Uh, which one? <laughs> Plenty. There are different the, types. Oh, no, I, I have really had also Bimpa on two or three. No, you have some guy on money something. Money? I have had uh, Al Hassan. The guy who professed about elections that people urged on me yeah. that I should have him on TV, Sham Shamuna. 
because he has something to say and he he had rightly predicted few things that had happened so people thought i should interrogate they thought that i i would be able to interrogate him well to find out whether his yeah. guest work is doing or and that's what i've tried to do just to interrogate the facts you know as it is also Bimpa had been had become a central figure in the whole mm -hmm. election equation yeah and i've been talking about decisively since 2008 the role of prophets in our elections has increased yeah. and prophets have been claiming victory for making one prediction or the other i wanted to be able to ventilate that whole space okay you know and for us to be it was difficult because we had to actually run the program in Accra. he insisted but i wanted him to make the pronouncement that i had uh, ajiman prempe who had come and said some mundial things about a prediction in march that he was going to confirm in september uh, and ajiman prempe didn't show up in september so the also came in and uh, wow. you know we just, we just you so, know, I mean, so. so you start this thing in 2004 mm -hmm. how many years were you hoping it would take for city to gain recognition as a serious contender well recognition again is in faces mm -hmm. you know so there are times that you gain content recognition but you do not gain commercial recognition which mm -hmm. is ready for advertising okay because the advertising part is just this much mm. and so people need to be convinced and you need to you also need to be uh, more persistent over a longer period of time mm -hmm. for you to start um, seeing so in terms of program recognition we thought that one year between one year two years we should be settled with our programming structure mm. and as for advertising or commercial recognition our estimate was five years um, which was a bit um, of a struggle um, which made uh, some of our people who are supposed to be leading the commercial wing um, give up so early but it was it was it was a big struggle so by two so what would you say was the most important inflection point for city well for for the most important point of inflection would come at the time when we decided to um you know the the the, the strategy was to be big on news and current affairs mm -hmm. and also events mm -hmm. and so we would use events to attract the younger people because typically younger people are not the people who are interested in news mm -hmm. or structured news and so we went for the kill because at the time the bigger boys were known for um, the big events mm -hmm. i mean when when i was with multimedia events was my thing um and we did a few mm. events at the time um I, when i brought um ron kinoli ron kinoli, yeah. ron kinoli. Was that was a major one okay. yeah at the time you know so we we, we had practiced that so we knew how to but we just didn't have the resources i think we went into our um we tried this event with uh Beanie man oh that was a, that's a story 2005 <laughs> that's a story yeah, 2005 yeah. That's a story. Beanie man um which we we were led by our program you know, not, not to time. interrupt you but i think the Beanie man story mm -hmm. Even though it became a negative story, gave us confidence that we had oh, been yeah. noticed. Oh, yeah. Because people yeah. deliberately went out of their way to frustrate the Biniman concert. Well, that's what yes, happened. competitors oh, yeah. went out of their way to frustrate the Biniman concert. And oh. Nick prevailed on us not to take any further action when he got the evidence that through one of the hired uh, people, one of the hired uh, service oh. providers who was close to him, that people had really deliberately frustrated the Biniman effort. Wow. We knew that it looks like we are getting noticed and, uh, and that the battle was on you know but this Benny man Benny man came in and i can't remember the second day he didn't perform yeah the second he said day, he didn't perform we did the first day at the yeah. conference, conference center, center. Yeah. the, the place was packed yeah oh, it yeah. wasn't as packed as we were expecting but by the end when we we're finishing it was great but the thing was people really enjoyed the concert so they wanted yeah. a stadium one yeah they were looking forward to it people were and then for some for some reason it didn't happen yeah, yeah that, what was it? i can't remember well what happened at the time we was had to do a statement we we and were, was it not you and I that did the statement? I remember that he we at ready. 8 p.m. I came into the studio to do a yeah, statement. Yeah. Yeah. Because actually everything was ready and yes. it was supposed to be a, a major outdooring event. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So Bini Man at the time, early 2000s to mid 2000s, was the biggest, you know, name in, in, in the yeah, dance hall yeah. music. And um, the second night, I uh, was supposed to do it at the National Sports Stadium, Accra Sports Stadium. And... Um, the equipment supplier the pa system supplier 
um, had an issue with our programs manager, which, which I, th I thought was petty, um, just decided that he won't do it again. Ah, that's what happened. Wow. He won't do it. And when he met me, he said that, yeah, your manager, when we are working, he's going to buy papaya, he's eating the papaya. And, 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 and that was his reason. Wow. That why was he eating yeah, was while, while we're working? And, wow. and, and this was the day of the event. Yes. Hours to the event. In fact, in the morning, we had been to the stadium and it was okay. Everything was okay yeah. up until 5 p.m. 5 p.m., yeah. When Yao, wow. Samoa, and the team that were there went to get some food, the man got upset and I, you won't believe it. He pulled the plugs and destroyed the program. The park is too... When the man moved, he was at M Plaza. Yes. He moved yes. to the stadium on his ready to perform. And we really we were not sure what to tell him at the time. It was devastating. And people had bought tickets oh, yes, and yes. were still... Coming in. into the yeah, yeah, yeah. people were still coming to city to yeah. look for tickets. Two thousand and there was total confusion at the stadium. And people had traveled from outside Accra, yeah. and that for me was my worst ever moment in this wow. business. And I mean, the media, like uh, I have to say, Francis Doku was very unkind to us. Well, he was, still is. Oh, I don't know about still, but Francis Doku was particularly <laughs> unkind to us, and uh, we had he was he was one of the most respected writers of the graphic at the time. Okay. I think he's still a respected entertainment uh, be recognized. <laughs> well, respected, maybe. Mm -hmm. recognized. And so he put up an article that well, was very, very devastating to a young station, uh, the way it, it, it was bad. I mean, well, he, he did it many times He almost said locations. that we were going nowhere. And, wow, uh, exactly. Uh, yes. And those things were painful because... I mean, you, you don't know that still... he probably wrote something about you that was negative that we didn't tell you. I was I was told later. On. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> I thought I think that it was like they tell anybody me anybody will put me on or air, me or the response from the newspaper was negative. Negative, yes. Anybody will first, apart from myself and the old ones. So any new the idea of putting new people on, they didn't like it. Anybody will put on air, you know. And that when the event occurred, they didn't ask us outside of the story. They just published. And in fact, we had issued a statement on the Saturday night, but by Monday, Tuesday, the publication had gone wild. And, and uh, but it made us know that we had been noticed. And that if we will stick okay. together, you so know. Paul, who is on the screen? Oh, oh that is uh, you and Samens, most likely coming from our lunch base down the road. And Sola, incidentally, I didn't add him to the list of lawyers. Sola Aklamati, who was one of our marketing most effective marketing people. Thank now, you. Sola had been a friend of mine at Commonwealth. Okay. Because on his arrival at Commonwealth Hall in University of Ghana, the first day, he had to spend the night in my room mm. because they were just beating him up. They, they said he should go back and, and grow a little bit before he comes. He was nine <laughs> years old and he was screaming, I'm not nine years old. And he, they said he was nine years old. And, you know, so, and when I ran elections on campus, he was one of my effective campaigners. So, and he had studied uh, uh, marketing at School of Admin. So when we were looking for, I told Samen that I had this guy, but I don't know whether you like him, you know, the guy, you have to see him. And Samen saw him and just fell in love with him and said, yeah, I, no, I like this I, guy. I think, you just uh, back a bit, you see, you had brought this guy to me to employ at Coca-Cola. Yes, 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 yes. After he <laughs> finished school at me, yeah. That's correct. So yeah. that's how I got to know him. Yeah. But, and yeah, that's Sola. Sola, Sola. Oh, that's Sola. That's, he left you later on to join Vice as one, as you can yeah, see. Yeah. So he's not a full lawyer? Uh, yeah, I think so. Sola about is not a lawyer, yeah. Eight or nine. And he's of, married. And he has, our he has former two. staff are lawyers. Yes. And it was the, what was the, was he you to, telling them to it, do law? I think for the newsroom, yes. I was thinking that, look, when I was studying law, I was so excited about that thing that look, law is something that everyone should have. And uh, Teria, Clement, Koshiga, Koshiga Kelly, the latter, Kelly, and, and they are all doing quite well. Uh, I mean, Koshiga is Chris, a, Chris, Koshiga is the one leading the charge at the Supreme Court yes. for the OT region. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Chris Yabua is the one who brought the legal action against the finance minister yes. for the group. You know, yes. and uh, Teria and Clement are teaching. Teria was instrumental in Parliament, and I mean, I've benefited from from all of them. I called Teria and said, "I need this this material." He just sends it to me. Near Feels that he will charge people for. Yeah. He will just send it to me. A part of plant works for. The group he yes, works for Omni yes, as exactly. a lawyer, you know. So, and so Salem, I don't know who's in yeah. law school now. Oh, Salem is in law school. I didn't know Sky. Yes, you know. So somebody wants me to ask you, Samens, where you found Sky from. So that, let me read a few comments. Actually, yeah. we are enjoying your comments. So I, I want to read a few before we comment. Mm -hmm. uh, but before you get there, there's a funny thing about Kelly Delata. Kwesi Delata. That's <laughs> Kelly Kwesi Delata. You know, he spoke <laughs> English with some some fine, you know, structuring yeah. of the language, mm. and you know. He was such a very, he was such a simple person. Mm. He, di he didn't want to do any difficult, yeah. you know. So was, once the, the guy was on the phone trying to get um, um, somebody. some uh, politician to respond to an issue. So he called the politician and um, 
he kept going on sir so um this person has said so and so about it and then and then you could hear the politician say that look we i'm not interested he said no you know what just debunk it and let me do the story just debunk it <laughs> That, that's also because there's a lot of pressure put on our reporters to do stories. Mm. You know, some men had a style of not relying on the assignment, which is no typical with a classic newsroom. You have an assignment said everyone must have a story. So everyone had a responsibility mm. to do a story. And if you didn't do a story, it could affect your salary. Mm. So they needed to demonstrate that mm. they had done the story. When it came to a newsroom, you really couldn't tell who was the boss. And I'm, I'm sure you remember that. Yeah. What, what an interesting narration by lawyer Paula Domotri and Samarata Mensa. Wish mm. you all the best from Peter in Makati. I, I think that. I gave up my office to using it, even whilst I was still there. Later on, yes. No, no, it, during the time, because I was never there the whole day. I just come in for the newsrooms. I said, okay, so you became the de facto leader of sorts. Well, in, you were there, you in were the there. current affairs side. <laughs> well, yes. Ben, I asked some men how he captured the last guy, but she relumped it from Santana. Okay, that's a question. Uh, let me read a few more. Watching you guys live on Multi TV from BA, loving the story so far. I'm inspired as a mentee of your work. Congrats on a light turn loot. My worry is that Multi TV may remove you from their channel soon. Well, actually, Multi TV right. is owned by Knet. It's not owned by what you think it is. Ben, I started listening to CTFM in 2007. I love your programs and everything. Christian from Medina. Happy 14, Baby City. You've made significant impact in Ghana media. I can't listen to news without hearing it from you first. You have good and competent newscasters. Continue your good work. Samuel from Kumasi. Thank you, Samuel. Glad we got your Multi TV from. Abyss, Kola, Doma, and Hinkru West. Wow. Hi, Bernard. Congratulations to you and the entire city team for coming this far. Thank God I first chance on CTFM when I randomly tuned into DJ Amani's music show. I loved it and said I would definitely tune in again. But when I listened to you the next day, I was stuck with City. One thing I love about your morning show is that you touch on all sectors of the economy and not just newspaper highlights. Wishing you more blessed years and huge salaries. So this non-newspaper thing as well is something you guys put put in the team congrats i love city i love you guys a lot ben and umara are my role models i have no intention of ever doing journalism though i just love it when you young people thrive at what they do and now that i've heard samens's story i'm humbled and inspired god bless you for persevering and preserving this wonderful brand hi bernard good evening i'm really enjoying the conversation on the 14 years of city indeed city fm has really shown class in the Ghanaian media ever since i started listening to city i knew city would do well congrats on your 14th this is uh, so sometimes you say that the, the first major inflection point was the Bini Man when Bini when Man. we got thrust and then the BBC award in 2007 yeah the Bini Man yeah. as Paul, Paul said I mean we did it only that unfortunate um, issue mm. but the worst part is that we still had to pay this equipment supplier because Uncle Nick prevailed on us don't worry let's just pay him so that you know and when the big boss talks, you just have to let it go. But I mean, left to me, I wouldn't have paid. It was, a, it, was no a, it was a serious. But as Paul said, it gave us, it thrust us into the national yeah, limelight. Yes, because it brought. The thing is that it brought everybody together. Yes. I mean, that painful experience forced us to unite as a family. And you remember that afternoon when we all met in the newsroom, and we, you know, I spoke to the team. Explain we move, explain everything, and from that day, everybody was spot on with work, mm. and that again led us to the first recognition. Because when we started, we said to ourselves that forget about awards, because mm. I'm not a believer of awards. No, no, no. Uh, because f apart from for me, apart from the GJ awards, I didn't think there were. The credible awards around and so people find look for money they say they are doing awards go and take some people's money and and then it so we were not going for any of but that. this was a good award bbc africa radio award 2000 and well, uh, until then seven seven yeah 2007 in nairobi yes, yes nairobi. nairobi which we got a bbc awards uh, but we entered yes. we all entered you had to, you had continent to enter. wide um you yeah. know process um, and it was it was it was three quite, years into the stations like yeah, yes we we're just three years when we did that and I remember um, yourself and uh, Sindo Tamaklo uh, doing the putting the everything together you know making sure that I initially I was a bit skeptical but the energies that you expressed also encouraged me mm. and then we entered we won the West Africa one we went ahead to win 
um, the Africa one as the most promising yeah. uh, radio station, um, you know, going against the likes of Talk 702 yeah. in South Africa, uh, Capital FM in So Nairobi. that endorsed oh, oh yes. the idea that w the model was right standard exactly. because the bbc was quite impartial at the time exactly and they had partner systems of which we were not part we were not and yet we won and another thing is that we when we started the bbc actually came here okay they had come to see us to see whether we could yeah. be um their other partner but they later on came back and said joy said they will not they allow agree they, they had originally agreed. I went to London to oh, see yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Then Wasn't you and I? Or just we went together. Yeah. We went together. To see them. And Sat then down. Because we're doing it in Kumase. When I went to start Love FM in Kumase, Capital Radio had a BBC partnership yeah. in Kumase. But they still worked with us. And so I thought that based on the same model, we could do that in Accra. Mm -hmm. But we had serious disapproval, serious resistance, resistance from Joy FM, and and we took it like that. Paul, you, how two things? How do you see the brand in terms of when we came in? Of course, Joy was the dominant brand, but there are now a few more stations. If you analyze radio brands across the spectrum, do you what's unique about City? Because now you are outside. Yeah, it's, it's the strength of the reporter. I mean, I'm news buyer, so forgive me when I stay on news. Mm -hmm. It's the strength of the reporter. It's the strength of the person who is analyzing the news. That's always the difference. You know, news will always come. And as I keep saying, news comes basically fundamentally in three forms. It's either a legal story, it's a political story, it's an economic story, mm -hmm. or a general story. The reporter must have competence in at least one of these. Mm. The, the time has gone when people were excited that a journalist can ask a question. <laughs> it's gone. Mm -hmm. The time has also gone when the people were asking, what type of question are you asking? Mm -hmm. It's gone. Mm -hmm. The time has now come when the influence of the media has grown, that they are asking you, the journalist, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what people want to know. And that's what is leading the so market. Opinion journalism. Opinion journalism with Rupert Murdoch. Opinion-based news. Mm -hmm. And this speaks really to the competence of the person. There was a three-line uh, format of news analysis that that Samens introduced, I think he learned it from the BBC or something, that the newsroom's opinion, the actual story, and the experts from the university. Okay. So when you have, that's what we, that's what we used to do here. Oh. So when you have a story, mm. we get a story. This is what the newsroom thinks. And we look at it from the history. So the budget comes. So the budget is an economic story. So it's for people like you. Mm. But we compare it to the last year budget. And by the time we are telling the people, we have to be able to say that, Kendo Foyata has announced a 14% increase in this. Mm. But this means that he was not able to achieve the 15% he announced last year. That's why he's probably going to 14. Mm. We have to tell the, the listener that. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Kendo Foyata himself or the opposition. Then we go to the University of Ghana, Professor Gokel. Now, what do you think about it? And then you have left the guy who is listening to you with the full dose of the story and how you have analyzed it. If you don't have that depth. So it was always then, about getting a strong getting the, individual that reporter who is enthusiastic, who is willing to learn mm. a lot, and who is excited about the work he's doing. That, that's very, very was important. Was our political culture prepared for that, ready for that? Because uh, it was that format, they, right? They were, they, were, they were not quite, but that is why we City has led and has opened the way in, 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 the, in the news and current affairs analysis. I think the another thing that you, we have to say is that the format of the morning show, mm -hmm. it didn't, the, the City format, which now seems to be the format of everyone else, was not the format of morning show before. It wasn't. The format of the morning show was a personalized morning show of Kwame Sefakai, Komla Dumo, Kojo Ponkrumah, Bernard Avle. That's, that's it's a personalized morning show. So you come in and you, you have your stuff and then you roll it. That format where we have a team mm. that is looking at it, that has a report, that can run the morning show without calling any in politician. Yeah. That format, which is now looks like becoming the format, was also. Samens is telling us about how he created that format. We'll yes. take another short break. This is still the point of view with Paul and Samens, City at 14, and we're telling the story. We've received so many of your comments. We'll read a few of them when we come back. Stay with us. Ever thought about where you'd really want to live or invest? Is it beautiful, modern, and sustainable? Is the architecture advanced with state-of-the-art facilities? What if I told you you could find it only 15 minutes away from Adenta? When your hard work pays off, you need to invest in the right place. High-quality real estate appreciates in value. 
But the value is not just your home. It is also the area that surrounds it. Good roads with safe speed limits, drainage for even the most punishing floods, and neighborhood planning that ensures your view will never change. You can also invest in the commercial, social, and mixed business spaces, as well as Apollonia Business Park. It's time to make your move to Apollonia City. Call or visit us today. Our payment plans are tailored for you. Visit www.apollonia.com.gh or call 0275-577-577. City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV, it's your world. This is still the point of view. Your comments are coming in quite rapidly. Here are more comments. Uh, congrats, Bernard. Congrats on 14 years of excellent journalism. I started listening to City when I was in level 100 at KNUST, and I've always relied on you for accurate and reliable news. This is John Abba Myako Kumasi. Ni Amponsa Kuinu. He used to work at City. He says, Bernard, I benefited from Samen's tutelage in branding and events. I love City. Great guys. Kudos to Bernard Samen's Paul. For setting this up, I never regretted working with you guys. Who does? Ni Amponsa Queen. Peter McCarthy Hill says, Congrats to City FM for 14 years. Never knew Paul was at City. He is everywhere in the media. And to Samens, did very well for keeping up the standard. This is from Peter. Coleman. Coleman. You know Coleman. Robert Coleman. Robert Coleman. He's now building Stadium. Bernard, I'm so proud of you guys. You always make my day. Say hello to Samens for me. He is my favorite person. But tell me, it's not my name, me. Koma, you look back here, you don't tell it. Tell it, Koma. Yeah. Ah, yo. Reverend Bernard Aliakwa, he said, Bernardino, thanks Samens for me too. He opened up media space for me and introduced me to GH. Is that true? Who is that? Reverend. He's one of our pastors, our good friend. You opened up media space for him. Reverend Aliakwa. Samens, you're a big man, pal. Today is City at 40. We'll talk about Reverend Aliakwa later. Bernard, my name is Mohamed Baba Azazi from Garu. You guys are doing a great job. I love it. And I've been following your programs. Allah bless you abundantly. We'll say amen to that. KJC, City number one station in Ghana. That was unthinkable in the early 2000s when Joy was leading. Joy used to be my only radio station. And I wouldn't compromise on that. Guess what? After Dumo and Opong Chroma, City became my favorite. This is KJC. And there's a lot more coming through. Summers, these days, City TV is now the thing we're saying. Was that part of the original idea at all? Well, you know, Uncle Nick originally, as Paul said, wanted to do television. But okay. I, I was one of the people who discouraged the whole idea of television. Mm. Um, and even, say, two years ago, if you had spoken about television, mm. I, it still wouldn't have been an attractive option for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought of going into television um, because of digital migration. And that's the major reason why we decided to go into television. But I didn't think that the market, the advertising market, was big enough to host another um, um, analog TV station. Okay. And saying analog, analog would mean that you need a transmission side and then the studio side. And transmit the, the equipment for transmission, although there are too much mm. money involved. Mm. And so I thought that if we are going digital, then all we required was a studio mm -hmm. and content and that's why we chose to go into tv mm. now what are we doing with tv again tv is not replicating radio mm. um, paul said something which 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 is significant audience engagement strategy for radio is different from television mm. radio you engage with the station mm. Radio with the station. With television, you engage with the program segments. Okay. And that's why people target program segments on television. Mm. But people are attached to 
radio stations. Mm. And so this is it. So we thought that, okay, if we're going to get into television, then we should define our market straight into news and current affairs, and which is what we are doing. Our estimation is that in one year, we should be counted among the top three. In one year? In one year, we should be counted among the top three television stations. And that's what we are working at. We started June this year. Um, so know. any lessons from the struggles of City Radio that you are bringing to City TV? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, I won't repeat a class deliberately. <laughs> I will not repeat a class. I mean, what I have learned, I still have. Mm. And um, first of all, learning how to appropriate talents okay. is a major thing. Mm. How, to how to find space for people to mm. operate at their maximum best is a major thing. And lessons from radio mm. have come in handy. Mm. Um, somebody asked a question. I think it will be interesting to um, how did we uh, discover Richie Sky? Yes, where did Richie um, Sky come from? Uh, Richie Sky, and I must say, two persons which were introduced to me by my good friend um, Gabi Asayo Chidako. Um, first was um, Richie Sky. Uh, because Richard Sky used to work as a newspaper reporter with the statesman and was struggling to move into broadcasting. So Gabi asked him to come and see me. Initially, his first year, two years, was 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 not so good. Because he had a white unicorn t-shirt. <laughs> well, he, he, used to you. Like, he used to like wearing <laughs> white unicorn yeah. t-shirts. I mean, not so good because he, was, he wasn't patient enough to learn the news delivery but he was very good with his scratching and uh, structuring for news and then the other person that gabby had also proposed was shamima muslim um, oh, wow. you know we had met at a function and Gabi, so this person at a time um you were traveling you were going to go back to school okay and so gabby said well why don't you try this one so i said you want to yes, do it yes he said yes 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 so if you remember, so we tried Shamima in the morning. We tried her in the morning for a while. Yes, and yes. I was getting very close to the elections. And the morning, she had a rough start. So I moved her to afternoon, where we're doing... Um, um, two, two, we called it 2.30 two two at 2. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, there two were 2.30 election election programs program. at 2. Yeah, the election And program. she would host yes. the sort of and nationwide discussion. That's where Shamima found her space. And so after that... Put on After myself. that, Paul had also been involved in law school stuff, you know, practicing law or something. So then I uh, so put her on eyewitness. And so that's how they both wow. evolved. And both of them, again, including yourselves, um, have played a very significant yeah. role because Shaima became a, a, a strong voice in the evening at yes. the time. Yes. Um, I'm not so sure if we had had that in the space before. We no, hadn't had a lady doing the eyewitness. Because the eyewitness star was yeah. very anchor but opinion. But we sent Shamima to Metro TV as well. So she yes. went to do Good Morning. She did Good Morning yeah, Ghana Metro right. TV. Yeah, and, then she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then she was doing the eyewitness in the evening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's how. Uh, wow. So, so Sky TV, yes, we want to do TV. And we say that in one year, by the count, one, two, three, we should be there. And that's how we want to do it. And we should take complete dominance in the in the upper end of the demographics um, nationwide so when will you rest <laughs> because you you've not had i don't i i, Paul, the, I the, have to say something the, about the, the tv the, because the, going the, forward yes the television the digital migration is going to make tv very very significant mm -hmm. but the important thing is that those who have radio in addition to tv will have an advantage because it is on radio that you tell people what to expect on TV. on TV because it is on TV that you can sell your content so you could have sold this content I'm just checking the Facebook and you have very high eyeballs and you could have sold this content for one and a half to two cities and if you got a hundred thousand people to look at it pay and, per view. And, and pay one and a half to two cities that's how much money they no, not you don't get all of that of course you pay your taxes and you pay a DTT company and all of that but every uh, Monday and Wednesday you'll be recording such significant amount of money which will support your production to make it better and uh, radio hasn't really calibrated in that regard yet so television has almost become essential mm. for any news outlets including newspapers i don't know whether you know the daily guide as a tv channel a lot of so yes. things are sort of coming Everything together is aggregating to television and television is also going to free up uh, different individuals to be able to now do what we call a television program mm. so you can do this on city tv and you can do something else on tv3 mm. you can do something else on metro tv unless city signs you up and says that don't go anywhere, we'll pay you X amount of money. And we'll have and a conversation you could be very, about, very, about TV. Very, 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 very Thank you.
for being on the show. Yes, and Paul, it's been great having you. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for the leadership. And viewers, we wish we could go more, but we have to sleep and wake up early tomorrow morning. So we're, we're done with the show tonight. My name is Ben Adavle. Thank you for watching. Stay with City TV and good night. <laughs>